one of the things which we've seen is that in many cases, organizations don't want to use us across the organization. There are certain pockets of users inside these companies who have either access to critical systems or access to data which is critical. So these are people like executives, the HR and finance, finance department, the product development teams, as well as the, the IT teams. So they will use our solution to really protect these pockets of users, and we've set ourselves up so that we can be deployed for a subset of the organization. The, the people who are most at risk are the financial companies and the healthcare companies. Anthem was breached uh, earlier this year. Last year, we had uh, Partners Healthcare with a small breach. Both of these breaches happened because of spear phishing attacks. What we've seen is, even though that these companies could benefit by using our technology, they are, uh, they are very risk averse. They, and we have actually developed a few uh, add-ons which allow them to try us out very easily before they go whole hog and deploy us across large pockets of users. There are a variety of different uh, companies that are providing phishing awareness training packages. In these programs, the, the phishing awareness training company will come into your organization, they will fish your employees, they will tell you that 20% of your employees actually got fished, so we need to train these 20% on how not to get fished. Training is great. Unfortunately, some of the research has actually shown that employees start forgetting their training within 30 days. So the answer to this question from these companies is typically that we need to train them every quarter. If you're running a large organization, that is extremely difficult to do. Um, and also, the people who are most training averse are the executives in a company. They're busy, they don't want to be trained. They want a solution which works. Our approach is more of a filtering based approach. We prevent attacks from actually coming in to the, to the user's mailbox thereby protecting them from clicking on those, attack, uh, on those emails. We do have a component of training which we call inline training. And with inline training, what we do is that we actually augment the live mail stream to give users more information about the messages they are receiving. For instance, the first time our, our, our system can actually flag a message the first time a new person is sending me an email and if that email contains a URL or an attachment. Normally, a person has to remember that. Oh, I have never talked to, I have never received an email from John before. Hmm, who's this? Let me, let me take a look at it. It's less trustworthy. Another thing our system does with inline training is that it keeps track of that when John sends you an email, his email address is normally john at gmail.com. Today, this email coming in from John is actually john at yahoo.com. Something changed. The average user might not pick up on this change an email address, they'll see John's name and they'll say, oh, it's John emailing, emailing me again. But it's actually a hacker pretending to be John. Our system will actually pick up on this. And even if we can't mark that message as a, as a fish, we will tell the end user that they need to be more careful around messages like this. So we've got filtering components, we've got inline training components, we've got, and we have administrative tools all to target this problem. And we really come at it from a perspective where we are focused on empowering the end users against actually getting fished, rather than just teaching them on how not to get fished. So just to give you an example of some of the successes we've had, we have customers today who are using spam filters such as Trend Micro or Symantec Message Labs. And their email gets filtered by these spam filters before it comes to our servers. We then filter them for phishing, for phishing and then we send them on to their mail servers. We have actually managed to catch phishing emails which these very well-known, globally recognized spam filters miss. These phishing messages might involve bad URLs which were buried behind a shortening service or bad URLs which are buried inside an attachment. We've also managed to stop attacks where it is a hacker pretending to be somebody the end user knew. And these attacks, uh, because of the payload which was present, which was an attachment which would have deployed malware on the user's machine, would have resulted in that company losing data.